Before starting, uh, I really am flattered to have been asked to, to do this and participate in facilitating what I think is going to be a fun conversation about Sean's um, work and this new great body of work. And well, let's go back in time though a bit and, and talk about, I think a good place to start is when I last saw you, which was yeah. uh, five years ago when you had just graduated. And what struck me about seeing this show is that when I remember your work upon graduation five years ago, you were working with architecture as a subject matter. Um, and what I think is really quite striking is that you are still working with architecture, imagery of architecture as your subject matter. And I think that's a compelling place to start because a lot of artists, young artists, once they leave school are reaching out in all sorts of different directions and, and, and angles to find uh, uh, new voices and, and new subject matter, and yet you have maintained a consistent investigation. So, what is it about the subject matter of architecture that interested you then so much? Is it the same now? Has that evolved? And let's start with that. Yeah, it's been very consistent for me in my practice, going back to our, my time in school. And I found when I first started abstract painting that I needed something to go off of and to work out from. And that's really where architecture entered the work. I've always been drawn to geometric paintings mm -hmm. and looking at abstract expressionism, abstract expressionism at the time. Um, I knew I liked the geometry to it, but I wanted to find something that, that was there for me that was um, interesting. And that's really where architecture entered. And I, I was doing more two-dimensional paintings of these horizontal lines that for me were very reminiscent of stone walls, concrete walls. Um, uh, and everything was black and white and structured um, very geometrically and that was the entry point for me. Um, and even doing research when I'm, when I'm thinking about painting and, and what I'm going to be doing next, I'm, I'm looking at other artists and at the same time I'm looking at architects and looking through architectural magazines and, and drawing my inspiration from those types of sources. And I want to talk about those sources because one could work from architecture as a source in many different ways. One could, one could be sitting in front of uh, these structures and making sketches and such, but your, your interest was working from um, the photography of, mm -hmm. of, this, of these uh, uh, buildings and structures and such. And I think what might be worth talking about is what type of photography were you working from perhaps then? Because uh, certainly the, the, the way you painted in the past when I, when I last saw you has, has shifted and I'm not sure if that corresponds to your relationship to the, the photography that you're working from. So perhaps um, talk about, well, what kind of, what kind of uh, photography you're working from? Is it your own or is it found photography? Yeah, it was, it was always found photography. I would, kind of put images to the side, print them out, um, kind of just go through um, Google ad nauseum, just trying to find images that I was drawn to um, for compositional elements. And a big turning point for me in seeing this show hung was uh, the piece back there, Ontological Liberty, where it started from found images and trying to piece something together. And somewhere along in the process, I. I brought in my own images of um, some personal collections of photographs that I had and started using elements of those photos um, and putting them in the painting. And at that point, there was a huge shift for me and I started only using my own photos, um, which was a very freeing experience for, for me. Somehow it brought a level of subjectivity to the work that I didn't have before. There was always a separation between the found images, the architecture that I was looking at, to all of a sudden referencing things from my own past, from my own history, things that I was familiar with, that I've seen, that I have a memory of. Um, and that was a real big uh, moment for me in my painting. I think it's, I think it's evident, and, and I think what's really compelling then is the act of you then working from um, imagery that you have taken yourself, that you have a personal relationship with, you, you take ownership of that, or, or by virtue of you having taken these photos, they're yours, and 
the paintings then shift because I, I do see that 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 change, and and, and it's, I think it's really quite exciting for any painter to see that change happen um, in their studio when when an alteration of subject matter has happened, and then it's just like the the genie in the lamp just sort of just comes out, and it's like all sort of new options, and I think what's what's also compelling about the the use of architecture is is how you paint in terms of you using it as as, as subject matter, when you're painting, um, do you do you paint? Do you build a painting? Do you paint a painting? Because there is this sense of, of, of application of paint where it feels like you actually are constructing your constructions, your imagery of constructed um, forms and shapes and buildings are painted in such a way where you um, could be using tools that one would equate to the act of of um, Home repair. So, so do you do you do you see yourself as a, as an as an architect who happens to be painting? Yeah, I can relate to it in that way for sure. Um, yeah, there's a there's a, a process that I have that's always the same when I start a painting, and it starts with gessoing. I mean, for me, that's somehow a magical process of painting that just uh, gets the ball rolling, and then from there, I need to put down a few layers to act as a foundation of sorts to work out from. But there is a process of just putting paint down on the canvas, building up some layers, getting some things down in the background, and working out from there. So there is um, that aspect to it where there is a building of, building of layers and trying to figure out um, what photos I'm going to use. I don't, I don't necessarily have a preconceived idea of what these paintings are okay. going to look like going in. I think that's, a, yeah, let's, let's build on that sure. then because I think the actual process of how these get created um, is, is certainly worth talking about. I, often in, in, in when artists talks and painters are talking about uh, their work, they'll talk about the, the subject matter and then they'll move to how the work resonates, but that wonderfully important phase of the actual making um, can get jumped over. So you are, are you, you're working from maybe numerous uh, photographs that you've, you've taken. Are you developing mock-ups or, or studies, or is it something that you are? Well, do, how do you how do you develop? And do you have any strategies when you start? Are there, is there initial recipes to sort of kickstart the the act of getting getting on the track with these? Yeah, I think um, this series in particular, anyway, there was a lot of growth for me. So everything was happening quite differently. Um, which varies from painting to painting. But when I, when I realized I was going to use my own images, I just went and printed off a ton of them and kind of laid them out on the table and started picking and choosing certain photos that um, spoke to me, um, that had maybe a significant meaning to me. Um, and then would sometimes, when I was painting, have the photo up and be painting mm -hmm. just from a photo using bits and pieces of it. Where, where certain motifs from that particular image would show up in multiple paintings. Okay. Some of the other paintings, I would do little maquettes where I would have the, the images in front of me, some photographs that I would cut and tape together and, and try to make a collage that I could, that I could start from. There is that sense to the, to the pieces, to the paintings, where there is a, a, an aggregate of elements that's, that, that seem to have been, you know, well, fused and, and, and fixed and, and placed together. And I think that's one of the, the real compelling aspects of the work is that when you first look at these paintings, as I'm looking around at these paintings, there's, there, they have a, a quality where it seems that, well, there's a, there's a, a type of implied vanishing point per spectival lines. So we feel we have a sense of where we're sitting in space in relation to to, to the, the illusion in the painting, but then when we look at it a bit longer, things aren't really adding up. And, yeah. and, and there's elements that aren't following the, 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 the classical lines of, of, of perspective and vanishing point. And at the same time also, in creation of space, there's the sense of we, we want a kind of light source that, that, that is consistent, and mm -hmm. it's often not happening, and there's, there's a lot of contradictions. Is this something, Purposeful that you're 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 injecting in the work, or is it is it coming out uh, perhaps unconsciously? I'm, I'm curious about how you how you want to contradict and 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 almost sort of 
thwart expectations uh, of maybe what's expected in these paintings? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I guess it, it's, these paintings stem from a, an idea of creating a space, mm -hmm. one that you could move into and try to place yourself in. I mean, they came from very real places for me um, in very specific times, but I didn't want that idea of putting down such a specific idea of where this picture was taken from. So that's, I guess as I paint, I'm trying to erase. I, I get that sense. I get the sense that you purposefully are making life challenging and difficult for yourself as a painter in order to, to create you know, hurdles and roadblocks and, and I'm going to try to think of all sort of other architectural you know, <laughs> references, uh, <laughs> open manholes, uh, but, but obstacles. It, it, to make life exciting as, as a painter. I, I think a lot of painters do this. I know I do this in my work. You know, how it's almost like creating a type of visual obstacle course and to see yeah. how you do. Mm -hmm. And given that, if these are spatial obstacle courses, uh, and I think they are, are there particular paintings in this group uh, that we're looking at that were more of a struggle uh, than others, and maybe why? Or, there, or, or you could also point out if there any particular pieces that really represent a breakthrough. Is there something in any of these works that you, you can see, go, oh, that's, I remember when I did that, and that really opened up the door. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can point some of those elements out. Yeah, I'm going back to talking about my process of, of layering, layering paint and waiting for something, something to happen. And as you said, there, a lot of these paintings were struggles where I was continually overpainting what was underneath, trying to achieve some type of, um, type of depth and also to mix in more than one source for each image. Um, and then there was a few paintings like on the far wall with relative truth, a few paintings just clicked really quickly and um, developed much, much quicker than some of the other paintings did in a surprising way where you finish it or you're working on it and you have to put it to the side and just let it sit for a while and, and really figure out what happened and tell yourself not to not to mm -hmm. touch it, not to push it too far, that something organically happened on that painting that was nice just to put to the side and leave it alone for a while. And I, this can be one of the more difficult things for, for I think a painter to do is, is yeah. to put something aside. I remember your work uh, in undergrad, you would paint a painting and then you'd work on it and work on it and, and, and paint over and paint over. It, it seemed like your interest in architecture was, was shifting into Pompeii. It was, it, was just, it, was, it was being buried by strata and layers and layers of paint for, for you know, future archaeologists to sort of dig through and find. Yeah. So I, I, what I think is really quite exciting about this current work is there are there's elements um, not so much of thick burial, but almost the opposite. Maybe you can talk about this. There's a lot of dissolved uh, uh, aspects that are happening in the paint, the sense of erosion uh, and residue. Is this something that came out uh, strategically? Is something you wanted to employ, or is it through the act of, of painting that, that things shifted in that direction? Yeah, I, I think I have a pretty reactionary process where when I finish a painting, I look at it and try to figure out what I want to do differently in the next painting. Some things that might not have worked I want to do the complete opposite with the next piece. And for a long time when I was in school, it was about thick paint. And when I was able to get my own studio and work my own hours and not have to worry about anyone else in the space. Like instructors. Yeah. Like, yes, <laughs> I, could, I was more free to use uh, more chemicals and paint thinners and more oils. And um, being able to air out the space. Um, so I think that really opened up the process for me and, and it created a lot more transparencies and I was able to, to layer a lot more and keep that structure that was underneath and having that stay visible. Um, even, even the edges of these paintings, I like keeping them fairly dirty and fairly um, open so you, you can kind of look at them sure. and see what came first. Because for me, when I'm at a, at a gallery or a museum, that's one of the first places I look at and just try to figure out what, what came first, what was underneath, how much. Yeah, you can always spot painters at museums where they're always looking at the side of the painting. <laughs> it's a, it's at, at that angle, trying to figure, okay, those drips were on that drip, so that came first. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Right, it's, and trying uh, to orientate, like, how was this, pa was this painting 
painted like this? Maybe was it another way at some point? Um, because it is a physical process for me. I think I'm constantly moving these paintings around. I usually have a handful on the go. There's a few okay. drying. Mm -hmm. There's a few that I'm painting. Mm -hmm. And I think even in that process, I get mixed up with what photos I'm using where that kind of run into the next painting. Right? As a benefit to the yeah. work, I'm sure, mm -hmm. because there is a sense of, of nonsensical uh, elements that exist in these where uh, the pathway that leads somewhere uh, is now tilting up or, or, or you know, it's, it's, it's slamming into a, a field of color that is actually popping in a way that, that doesn't make spatial sense. So I, 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 I was going to ask you, is, do you stick with the, 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 the mock-up photos through to the end or is there a point where you, your painting is on its way and it's, and it's, you know, photo be damned, now I'm, I'm just going to sort of sail this however it wants to go. Yeah, definitely with some paintings, the, the photos will at some point just disappear and I'm working from the memory of being in that space and what I remember from the photo. Color. Let's talk about color because um, it, these, these paintings are, I find, they are an investigation of, of course of, of the subject matter we've talked about and of the material of paint, but your use of color is, is reverberating and to me, I get a sense that this is a true exploration and investigation in the, the wonderful joy of color and the bang your head against the wall difficulty of color. And uh, that'll probably never go away. So uh, talk about your relationship to the use of color in these paintings uh, and, and maybe your reasons of, of how you choose color and, and how you perhaps see color operating maybe differently in different works and, and how, you, how you have come to use color in, right. in these works. Yeah, color was a struggle for me for the longest time and the work that you know me, that, re that you remember that I was doing in school was very black and white and gray and for the longest time that's where I was working, that's where I was comfortable in and from there I moved to, to using color but in a way to mix grays, to use complementaries, to mix my own blacks and that's really where my understanding of using color came from and with these, Im or with these paintings, I, I was surprised walking in and seeing the show for the first time and realizing just how colorful these works were. Because I think I got lost in it as I was painting them and, and getting back to the idea of using my own photographs and the subjectivity that allowed me to have and the freedom with the paintings that that allowed me to have. Suddenly color entered the work on a way I wasn't really um, expecting. Like it was a very natural process for these works to, to be so colorful. I think the freedom that I had with my subject matter allowed me to be more open with these, with these paintings and allow more things to, to enter them. Um, I start and the color is originally derived from the architecture that I'm looking at and for the most, for the most part that's these stone walls that have mm -hmm. this eroded sense of um, time and you can kind of see this history of it. Um, so I start with very muted colors and from there kind of work out to um, kind of what you see on the top here, which is a lot more colorful. Yeah, and within this exhibition itself, I think there is a range of, of how color is operating. In certain uh, works that, that, is, that are behind us, a lot of opaics are present. Uh, a lot of color that seems to have, have existed in time and, and because of that maybe they feel aged and, and, and have a type of history uh, to them. They feel like they've been around. Um, and then some other works I notice, um, this particular one whose title is again... Relative Truth. Relative Truth. The, uh, a, a more saturated palette of thin transparencies and saturated uh, dissolves and, and not, not as nearly as much opaque where a, a, it seems like a new type of air and light are, are moving th uh, through the paintings. What I'd like to then ask you, and you touched just on this, is the act of you coming in and seeing the show, because you haven't shown in this gallery before, and I think it's, it's always exciting and somewhat potentially terrifying for any painter to have their work leave the studio, where it's, it, it looks great, presumably, and, but it's all working with, you know, in relation to yeah. the paint on your floor yeah. and the plant that's up in the window yeah. and such, sure. and then it comes into a new space, uh, a space that you're unfamiliar with, since it's your first show, as I said, were there certain aspects that just hit you right off the bat about your work that you did not know about your work? Were the, did, did your work reintroduce itself in a way that 
it showed maybe some personality or some aspects that were, were utterly foreign to you. And then you're like, oh, I didn't know you, you had that. Were the, did you experience that? I think starting out using architecture too, there was an idea of building a space through perspective, through shadow, um, in a very formal way using a horizon line. And then you bring color into the equation and there's this whole idea about building a space just with color alone. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's where I'm looking at other artists. Um, people like Peter Doig and Daniel Richter. I think those are kind of artists where I, I'm now kind of rediscovering just by their use of color alone. Um, so walking into the gallery, yeah, being surprised by the color and, and just trying to deal with that in itself and looking how we're trying to figure out how the space works just by, just by an, analyzing the color. And I think your use of color is one uh, of an investigation of space in a wonderful way where it often will contradict the space that you're creating through the act of drawing mechanisms, as I said, lines and converging lines. So we think we know what's going on and then you put down something like that a protruding color and this just, just sort of kicks over the spatial apple cart and 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 makes us reassess well where exactly am I standing in relation to this um, I think anytime someone has a, a solo show like this it can be a the work can act as, as a summation of an investigation or it can also perhaps be the beginning of something even you know that that, that uh, ongoing. So how do you how do you see the work proceeding f from this point? Is it yeah. have you wrapped up? Have you figured it all out? And no, definitely <laughs> and not. Are you going to sculpt now, or, <laughs> uh, or, or 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 are there elements and what are they that have that have come to light from this work that you just are itching to, to embark upon? Yeah, and I I think that's why it's still so hard to talk about because I I really haven't figured any of this out yet. I think this work was very much about moving outwards and growing and, and finding new things. Um, I'm excited to go back in the studio and see where this is gonna go because, like I said, it's still, it's still moving, it's still evolving. I really haven't, haven't figured out where I'm at with these works and I think I need to paint through that as opposed mm -hmm. to, to thinking about it. I think uh, painters are constantly having to sort of reconfigure the the sidelines and end zones, <laughs> uh, just in terms of keeping things fresh and, 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 and asking themselves, not what to paint. Um, I think the, uh, maybe all artists, it's, it's almost the more important question of what not to do. And, and are there other aspects that you feel that you will, uh, you know, basing your looking at the work, that you are not interested in, 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 in um, investigating? And then there are there certain elements that you really feel that you're going to push more more closely towards? Yeah, I think I'm going to put all these photos aside, the photos that were the inspiration for this show. They'll definitely move aside. I don't want to get to a point where I'm just regurgitating the same the same painting over and over. And, and even with this, with seeing these pieces all together, I can see certain motifs that I've gone back to and used a couple of times. So I think it's going to be important for me to then to move on and, and continue to try to push push the process. I, th I think and I think it bodes, bodes for a very you know, compelling and, and, and fruitful future breadth of exploration that you're going you're to conduct. I remember, um, and, I, and I want to bring up something you said about uh, right at the beginning of, the, of, our, of our talk here, um, you're interested in abstraction. Mm -hmm. Look at this and, and some may say these are abstract paintings, others may say these are abstracted representational uh, paintings. I'm not asking you to assign a label uh, to, to, and to who you are as a painter in terms of what, you know, what flag do you sail under, abstract flag representation. But um, do, you, do you look at and find yourself thinking about abstract painters while you work or, or more representational painters? Because I'm always curious, what, what are, who are the people running through your head, other artists that as you paint mm -hmm. that, that may be influencing you uh, to guide you through, through the studio? Yeah, I mentioned, I mentioned Doig and Daniel Richter. Francis, Francis Bacon's always been there for me, and I think he used color so well. There's something about the way he can, can conduct a space just with color, with color alone. Um, I find a lot of inspiration, too, just as I, I said before, looking at design magazines, architectural magazines. Even reading for me is somehow a, a good way to get away from the studio 
and still be in the right mindset, but be doing something completely different. So reading fiction, reading okay. um, biographies, which I'm doing right now, um, even dabbling a little bit in, in philosophy, or when I'm in the studio listening to, to interviews, listening to university lectures, just having something in the background that's just a little bit different, where I'm still in the, the same mindset, but I'm just approaching something a little bit differently. Okay. What I think is interesting in the artists that you've mentioned, Francis Bacon, where people may be surprised because we you know, can see a figurative work, figurative painter, mm -hmm. but with, with his spaces that he, he works with, cr creates, builds, uh, Peter Doig's, uh, Daniel Richter's, there's a type of unreal, magical space that they make. It's, 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 it's almost like a space of theater or of artifice. And you mentioned you look through magazines of, of say, maybe industrial, interior design, and the image of those are always so posed and placed and, and without a trace of almost the real, you know, happening in terms of actual you know, real people leaving their junk around somewhere. There's, there's a type of uh, hyper clarity. So do you see that the spaces you're creating based on the artists that you think about and, and the visual sources, are these spaces of, of fantasy? Are they, are they purposely trying to create an unreal space or an ideal space as opposed to the, you know, this, the, the everyday? That's my surprise question for you. <laughs> no, I think very much I would, I would be very pleased, or I am very pleased when people look at a painting and say that reminds me of, of that. Because I think there's an element to these pieces of something familiar. Mm -hmm. that, okay. there is, that there is an entry point where you can kind of um, place yourself in. And then work out from there. And, and then not re really not be able to figure out where you are. Um, and even as I paint with using, with, with using something as controlled as, as tape and putting in very specific geometrical figures and then next to that there's going to be just a complete area of a, of a color that I've just kind of splashed down on the mm -hmm. canvas and just let it let it do its own thing so there's this element of control versus chaos okay. um, interesting and I think that's evident that, that within the work that that interest in embracing uh, a more Un, the unplanned, the, the uncontrolled, the act of using these dissolved uh, passages of paint which are going to trickle and, 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 and create types of surfaces that you cannot, you know, or, nor do you want to seem to want to manipulate in any facile way, but just let, let that chemical do its mm -hmm. thing, much like the erosion of, of, of sort of time on the walls of, of these architectural spaces. And it's um, I think it's interesting the artists that you, as I said, that you have cited as, as influences because often I think painters are thinking about other painters that you wouldn't normally equate to their work um, mm -hmm. because why do we want to look at artists who really resemble what we do? It just, it'll just make us not want to pick up a brush, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and we were speaking briefly of that and, and for me, you know, Gerhard Richter is one of those guys. Like it's dangerous sometimes to look at certain artists because there's a rabbit hole there that you just want to completely avoid. Sure, yeah, the, the, the squeegee pulled yeah. mark and, yeah. and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then you're, uh, you're the Richter guy. For, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, one, no one needs that. <laughs> There's too much to live up to. <laughs> um, do we want to open up to maybe some questions at this stage Is this, uh, in terms of what we've talked about or, or maybe bring up some points that, that uh, haven't been brought up, which there are probably many. Is there anyone who has a uh, a question regarding what, uh, what Sean's talked about, or? I guess talk, I, I'd like you maybe just to talk a little bit more about your use and love for perspective, because um, it's just rampant in every piece as well as who uh, Question or uh, the request being uh, talking about use of perspective mm -hmm. in, in rampant and illogical and logical ways. So perhaps you can elaborate more on that. Yeah, and I think that's the control that I like. I needed something to enter abstraction, something to, to give me a grounding to work out from. And I think perspective and hard, hard lines allow me that element where I can start from and find myself. But at the same time, I don't, at, at the end of the day, I don't want a viewer to be able to see things so, as clearly as I do. Because um, I can look at these paintings and, and 
remember that photograph, remember being in a certain place. And I guess that specific um, idea, which is, is vital to my process, I guess I don't need to, I don't feel like I really need to convey that to the viewer right now. I, I think that's a really great, great, great comment in that your, your photographs and the use of perspective as, as a toehold or a footing, uh, an armature, uh, in order to then place upon your, your concerns and investigations and questions about painting get built upon that, but not, it is not vital that, it, it, that, it's, that that's apparent, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times uh, uh, people are, are, are always curious, well, is it, you know, how do you feel about the viewer not knowing where, why the painting began and from where, where it began and the reasons? Because I, 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 was, I was thinking about a, with Jim Dine, the, the pop artist who had said, who, who'd never worked abstractly, though very painterly, mm -hmm. and, and asked why he's never moved to abstraction. He, he'd say, I, I need something to hang my paint on. That, that being a, a rep, the representational, something that, that is familiar. Mm -hmm. From there, and then push it. So I, I, it seems like, yeah, the, the, the use of photography, use of perspective, these type of structures that give you a, a toehold and a, a footing. It's, um, I think that, that makes it a, an interesting element. Mm -hmm. So well, how do you feel the work resonates uh, uh, in, in terms of an emotional level with the use of color? Have you thought about color as, as, as something that re not just re reverberates optically or spatially, but, but perhaps emotionally or psychologically? Is that something that's come, in, come into your thinking about how these works operate? Yeah, and I, 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 I'm so new to it still. I think I'm still really trying to figure that out. Um, but a lot of times I can use it as a bearing um, or think of it as a landscape. Um, and I think there's elements to color that um, it's emotive in a way that it, that it can trigger something that you don't really expect it to, which maybe when you see something um, as specific as a, as a photograph, you can't, I can't necessarily get the same feeling when I'm looking at the place that I started from, but mm -hmm. somehow when I see that color later, it's somehow more true than, than the actual photo was. Does that make sense? It does, and I, the fact that the, the term of more true uh, is, is interesting that you're, you're basing these works at the beginning on photography considered, you know, the truth, yeah, yeah, <laughs> or at least it did for a while until Photoshop, but, uh, and, but yet, uh, now the use of abstracting it, distorting it, applying your own in intuitive color in creating a, something more true, I think is, is, is a wonderful term to use, for sure. Yes? The architectural references were very modern, sharp, um, angular, uh, urban. And then when I looked more closely, obviously, I see that the buildings have, uh, they're older, they're emotional, they're, um, you know, they're, they're not skyscrapers, I don't think. Now, as I say, I don't know if you talked about this before, but there does seem to be a tension between those two, intended or not. I don't know. So um, perhaps talk about the, the use of architecture in terms of um, the, t the different time periods where this architecture may, may have uh, come from in, in your photography, and, and is it prevalent, and, and perhaps does it affect the way you then paint these paintings if you're working from architecture that is contemporary as opposed to um, centuries old? Yeah, uh, and I guess to pull the curtain back a little bit, a lot of the photos that I had and that I was working from were taken from a trip to the UK when I was in Glasgow and Edinburgh and London. Um, and had a camera and it was, I mean, it was a great trip for my wife and I and it's interesting um, trying to relate that um, to the work and to the color and, and to, the, to the emotion that I guess I had at that time um, and kind of how that mysteriously enters the work that I, that I can't quite put my finger on. I think that's the hard part to talk about. Um, when talking about your work, because I think it, it comes from a place inside you that, you, for me, that I can't quite understand, that I can't articulate, but it makes sense when I'm, when I'm in the studio working. 
I think that's a very honest answer because often in, in forums like this we feel that we have to have our work fully figured out for the sake of, uh, of Q&A and, 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 and other artists in, 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 in the room. So I, I think the act of acknowledging that one doesn't know their work yet and may not is, is, is I think, a, not only honest but, but a healthy recognition of the, the power of painting um, and, that, and what it what it reveals, and, and but yet what it's, it's um, never going to disclose uh, on, a, on, a, on a literal or in a literal manner. Any other uh, questions or, or comments regarding, regarding the work? Yes? There's lots of insight from last night, and many people shared with me how excited they were to see a relatively recent TCAT grad performing work at this level. What advice would you have for the current group of ADAT and grads on the journey ahead? Okay, question being. This is what happens when you get success. You now people ask you what kind of advice. What, the, uh, the, the question being, what kind of advice would you have for um, other uh, uh, graduates? Because I think it is inspiring for, for them to see that uh, uh, someone who's graduated five years ago has a solo show here uh, mm -hmm. and has been working hard and, and, and you know, by gum, you can do this. It's actually plausible. One can become an artist. <laughs> so now that you've shown that, um, what kind of advice do you, do you have for, for recent graduates? Yeah, I, th I think you got to take some time and figure it out, get in the studio, um, work, thi work things out. Be, don't be afraid to make some mistakes and take some risks. Because it's very different in school. Um, there are certain pressures put on you that um, if you're just working by yourself, you don't have. Um, so for me, and under my circumstances, I moved to London, Ontario, and, and living there, I was able and fortunate enough to have time to just lock myself away Figure some, figure some things out on my own and just, and just paint and not have to worry about everything else that might come with that. Um. I think the exhibition has shown that because the painting, painting slow and it takes time. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it takes time to look at and to then, and, and just to live. And, and, and how do you find yourself? within all the influences that one has, has acquired and the, and the heroes that one you know, idolizes. And, and, and then that act of embracing those, where, does, where do you exist? And I think the exhibition certainly shows that through that, that, that act of, of investigating and, uh, you, you know, and, and being influenced by uh, your, your idols, you, you are er erupting and bubbling up through and, and, and showing yourself to, to be quite, you know, quite present in your own work, which must feel like a, a, a wonderful new stage to be yeah. at as, as an artist, yeah? And it was recently too, yeah. like I, I, I think I've now carved, out, carved away a place that I feel comfortable in, because mm -hmm. for the longest time you're constantly looking at others' works, you're pulling pieces here and there, trying to figure out um, where you kind of sit in that context. And um, it took me a while, but I, I feel like I found something, something, something new that is interesting me, that's pushing the work forward, that um, I'm excited to get back in the studio and, and try to push a little bit harder on. Wonderful, wonderful. Any other comments, questions? That's a wrap then. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you.